Hello, and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Since the Globetrotter was reintroduced into the Airstream product line in 2018 in the 27 FB floor plan, it's been a huge success. Airstream decided in 2019 to introduce it in the 25 FB floor plan, available in twin and queen. Let's go check it out. The 25 FB Globetrotter is 25 foot, 11 inches from the center of the bowl to the very back of the bumper. The exterior width is 8 foot, 5 and a half. The interior width is 8 foot, 1. The exterior height to the top of the air conditioner is 9 foot, 9 inches. It will leave you with an interior height of 6 foot, 7 and a half inches. The hitch weight, that's the tongue weight, that's the amount of pressure that puts on the back of your vehicle is 882 pounds. The unit base weight, and that would be counting full tanks of propane and the batteries that come standard, is 6,074 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating, that's the maximum the trailer can weigh before you overload the axle system in the frame, that's 7,300 pounds. That gives you a net carrying capacity of 1,226 pounds. The freshwater tank is 39 gallons. The gray waste is 37. And the black, which is your toilet waste, is 39 gallons. The FB floor plans are extremely popular because the wide open front and rear panoramic window. We're actually standing in the rear of the trailer right now. The dinette allows you to not only seat and see a view all the way around as you back it up to a lake or a mountain. Uh, you could eat your breakfast here, have some coffee and get that view. But the dinette doubles as a sleeping spot for two kids or one adult. This is 78 inches by 38. And the side lounge here, this slides out to 38 inches wide and it's 62 inches. So you could sleep two kids here as well. And if their feet spill over into the other bed, there's plenty of room that you could uh, sleep multiples here. The galley uh, sink area here jets out slightly to give you some extension of counter space and some bin storage in the back. You could put trash in here, you could put vegetable scraps, dog food, whatever you decide to put in this area, you could utilize it. Uh, it's got uh, a cooktop area that you have an option of either the standard gas oven or a convection microwave upgrade. And uh, the television in the galley is standard and there's a television in the bedroom that's standard as well. And moving back to the bedroom, you have an option of either twin beds or a queen and the queen will go this way it's 60 by 75 and there's an aisle you can walk around and squeeze in underneath the cabinets to uh, get to this side of the bed the twin bed really opens the floor plan up not only does it give you an extension of the living space you could use this as a lounge area but it makes the trailer feel a lot bigger so normally when you walk into a trailer and you see a queen bed your eye will stop at the bed because that's the furthest point that you could walk. On a twin, you could walk all the way to the end. It makes it a little bit easier to make the bed. So we see uh, a high increase in sales of the twin beds uh, for that reason. And another reason is you get a little bit more exterior storage. There's a storage trunk on the outside of either side of the twin beds and one up front. On a queen, you get one storage compartment. So it is something to consider. Even though that might not be your first option, a twin bed, I would take a serious look at it to see that it might work a little bit better for you. These beds are 80 inches long and 34 inches wide. And both sides are equal size. If you take a queen bed in an RV and you split it in half, it's 30 by 75 per person. So you're gaining an extra four inches of width and extra length per person on a twin bed. When you go to the Globetrotter series, they have a tough to needle mattress. So it's an extremely uh, comfortable upgraded mattress uh, over the Flying Cloud and Signature and Serenity series. There's a nightstand on the twin bed model with a drawer. On the queen bed model, there'll be a smaller nightstand off to the side of the bed. And on the queen, the bed will lift up and it'll allow you to gain access to the whole underside of the bed. And then the front half is your trunk that's uh, available from the exterior. On the twin bed, there's hatches that flip down and there's a storage bin that you could pull out to put belongings in. So you got four total hatches, one here, and then on this side you get a smaller one and a smaller one. So 
Uh, you have a higher volume of storage on the queen uh, when you lift up the bed, but this gives you separate compartments, many more self separate compartments. So a lot of people like splitting up their stuff. So uh, I want, what I want to do now is I want to go through a little bit more detail on the features that this trailer has and a little bit on how they work. So if you look, and we'll start from the front, we'll go through the back, and then we'll do the outside. Over the bed, there's uh, directional reading lights. They're all LED lights, and there's a little uh, switch here. You can turn it on and off. The front window opens all the way out. It's an awning-style window, but there's a rock guard on the outside that you have to open first in order to open the window. And the rock guard's uh, up here because this is the front of the trailer. This is the side that your tow vehicle is going to kick up debris, so that protects it. On either side of the bed, there's an electrical outlet, and there is a USB charge port on either side of the bed. And the curtains are, have a blackout lining built in, and they pull all the way around to the middle, and then there's another side here that will meet up there as well to give you complete privacy. The overhead roof lockers, when you open them, they're backlit. So you can see what's uh, inside. And then there's a mirror on the back wall. So if you're trying to grab an item, you could kind of see it as you go if you're a little bit shorter. And they use premium hardware for all their cabinetry. And it's all plywood with laminate. There's no particle board in any of the construction. Even uh, the back of it is lined in aluminum, just like the shell. There's a speaker box on either side and uh, there's additional speakers in the galley area. And then there's an accent light here on the ceiling on the top of the roof locker and you have an equal si uh, size space here as well. The decor pillows that come with it are on display. It comes with the, the bedspread and uh, these are the cushions that make up uh, the beds that I explained before. And what's nice about it is you don't have to bring them on every single trip. If you're going to have additional guests, you can pull these out and bring them along and, and store them accordingly. Uh, so I have them out on display right here. This window is an 18-inch stacked window, stacked because it has a porthole in the bottom. It's all safety glass. It's tinted. Just pull with two handles, twist, and lift with, evenly with both hands. And you can snap it into three different heights for adjustment. And I got a low setting. And you want to just make sure before you take the trailer and take off, twist and lock them in. Just make sure you walk through the trailer. There's an app you could do, an Airstream Care app, and you have manual that gives you a checklist of things to do before you leave the campground. There's a smoke detector in the bedroom that has a nine volt battery. You want to replace it every six months. There's a wardrobe here as well. And these shelves are removable and adjustable. All the hardware is premium hardware that detaches. So there's a lock on the back. You can undo the lock and you can pop this hinge off. And you can make adjustments to the door if you ever wanted to re-square it up if, as things settle and expand and contract. There's a fantastic fan in the bedroom and one in the galley. The bedroom has a shade, so you can make it a little bit darker in here. Uh, it has a motorized lid, rain sensor, and variable speed control. So once you set your speed one, two, or three, and you decide whether you want the fan on or off. You hit open lid. There's a little switch here with the diagram of the lid open and closed. The motor will spin the lid up. There's a button that pops up. It turns the fan motor on. I could change the speed. And I could also use a thermostat so I could change the temperature setting. So I could click it. There's our room temperature. So if it gets hot, hotter than our room temperature, we'll kick back on and off. Or I can set it cooler than the room temperature. And if it, uh, rain hits the sensor above, it will shut the lid down. Once the sensor dries, the lid will open back up and the fan will come on. If the screen gets all dirty, you could pull the quick release here and that undoes the screen so you could clean the blades. To close the lid, just hit the close lid button. And if you ever wanted to manually run it, you just spin the knob to lift it up and down uh, manually. This trailer has a 15,000 BTU air conditioner with electric heat pump standard. The heat, air conditioning system is ducted, so there's duct work throughout the whole entire trailer. 
There is an optional second air conditioner you could get, and it would replace, it would go in place of this fantastic fan, and it would be a 13,500 BTU air conditioner with electric heat pump. Uh, so 15,000 BTU should be enough to cool a whole entire trailer. For extreme situations, they do offer a 13,500 BTU. So you have to decide whether or not the fan or the second air conditioner is more valuable to you. But if you do get the second air conditioner, there's no baffle in the ductwork. So if you're running the main air conditioner in the galley air, it will still duct air into the bedroom if you don't have the second AC on. So it, the whole trailer will be covered. But these you can adjust and spin the direction where the airflow is coming out. You can also trim a few down so less airflow comes in an area that you might not be using and you'll have more dedicated air uh, in another area of the trailer. On this side of the trailer we have your standard bedroom television. It's an LED TV and there's a strap here that you can pull down that unlocks the arm so you can swivel it out at different angles. And then you just want to make sure that's locked in and secure before you tow the trailer. The television is plugged into an electrical outlet, which doubles as an inverter outlet. So this outlet's going to be live and powered when you're plugged into electricity at a campground or a generator. But when you're not plugged into electricity, you have the option to turn on the 1000 watt pure sine wave standard inverter that comes with this trailer. And that will power this outlet, the other television outlet, an outlet underneath the dinette and one up by your Blu-ray player. Below the TV we have your bedroom ceiling lights which are also dimmable. We have the accent light above the cabinet you could turn on and off. There's a HDMI port which is how the, the television communicates with the Blu-ray player in the cabinet and we have your coax cable connection so if you go to a campground and hook into their cable uh, the cable will go throughout the whole entire trailer or you can do a portable satellite dish and hook that up outside and that will then power the TVs for communications. There's a HVAC control, this is Dometic Comfort Control 2 Center. You could turn the whole panel on. Right now we have no systems on and we're on zone 1 which is uh, zone 1 for air conditioner. So I could uh, switch the mode now and I could go to air conditioning. I could go to automatic, which would go between air conditioning and heat pump. I could turn on heat pump only. I could turn on the furnace, which is your force head air propane 25,000 B2 furnace. Or I could do fan only, which is just the fan circulating air inside the air conditioning. Or I could go back to off. I could set the clock. I could set a program. I could change the fan speed when I'm in air conditioning from low to medium to high or to automatic. Automatic, it would, it would come on and off as needed depending on what your temperature is set at. So let's get out of the program. Uh, inside temperature I could, uh, I could see and I could change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. In the hallway here, the second privacy uh, curtain, now we can see it from this angle, will pull across to give you privacy so you don't have to close all your blinds when you're using the shower. Down here on the floor, we have your battery converter charger. This is a multi-stage battery converter charger by uh, WFCO. And this flips down and it gives you access to all your breakers and 12 volt fuses. Everything's labeled inside this. Uh, there's also a GFCI reset for your refrigerator, your bathroom, kitchen, outside electrical outlet. Those are your outlets that are wet areas. So if uh, that was to pop, it would be in this position, you could reset it. You could also hit the test on it. You just push it back and lift it up. Uh, if these if any of these 12 volt fuses blew, there'd be a red LED light indicating next to it, and that would indicate that that circuit had a short uh, short circuit, and that's what blew the fuse. So you would be able to identify it. And below it is the battery charger. So we're plugged into electricity. So we're converting AC current into DC current and charging the battery at the same time. And this is multi-stage, so we'll charge the batteries based on their level. The battery charger portion on the bottom, since it creates a little bit of heat, there's a ventilation here. So you want to make sure you never block this area with a dog bed or your sheets are too long because that will prevent airflow, which will cause the converter charger to overheat. There's a porthole window in the bathroom door. It's kind of a signature to the Airstream. 
There's a little gap here in the top of the uh, bathroom door that allows enough airflow through if you're using the exhaust fan. Premium hardware here in the door handle, residential style. There's a, a lining on the interior of the laminate wall, which looks like a wallpaper, which gives it more of a home type feel. You got a towel bar, ceiling lights, water heater is gas and electric. So if you have enough electricity, say we're plugged into a 30 amp circuit, we have our air conditioning running, refrigerator, uh, we might have enough amperage, we could hit the electric element of the water heater. <clears throat> If uh, you're not plugged into electricity or you have a lot of devices on, you might want to turn the water heater on gas, which is the gas side. So it's DSI, so when you flip that switch, uh, it will automatically ignite the water heater. You have 15 to 20 minutes, you'll have uh, piping hot water. And it's a six gallon reservoir, but it has a mixer valve, so it gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water. So if you turn that faucet on the hottest setting, uh, you would have nine gallons continuous flow of hot water before you ran out. Most of the people are going to mix it with quite a bit of cold water because it co does come out about 130 degrees. And the red light in the middle is strictly if there's a misfire on the gas side of the water heater, uh, that red light will come on to warn you that, hey, the water heater tried to ignite, it couldn't, it shut off, and that's why the red light's on. And up is on, down is off. Uh, I got a lot of tech support calls on that. Um, because it's opposite of what one might think based on the labels. Premium stainless steel deep bowl sink. Uh, it's got a growy faucet in the bathroom in the galley area. Laminate top here in the bathroom. GFCI protected electrical outlet. There's a ledge here for, to store some items. The mirror lifts up and gains you access for additional storage. And this hardware here is adjustable so you can adjust the height depending on how tall you are if you want it. There's a J-latch that keeps it shut when you're in travel. There's a bathroom fan you can just push up, push the red button, that vents the air out and this allows the air to come in. When you're done, turn it off, pull down. There's even an air conditioning duct in here as well. On this wall, we have a towel bar. The toilet is a porcelain toilet. There's a foot pedal. That allows the ball valve to open to flush the waste. When you push on that partially, it turns the water valve on and allows you to fill the bowl or give you a good flush. So you could get away per flush with a few cups of water, uh, or you could fill the bowl all the way up if you want, depending on uh, your desire. There's additional storage here underneath, and there's a toilet paper holder underneath the cabinet here as well. There's another storage compartment here for bulk storage. So you can put extra toilet paper there. And you got one here on this side as well. And then on this side, Colonial Airstream is part of our starter kit. We give you some toilet paper to get started. A lot of people spend the evening at our dealership after their hands-on training and camp out in their trailer. So we give you some of the supplies to get started. Just wanna make sure it's septic tank safe, RV safe so it breaks down in your tank properly. And then we have uh, toss-in drops for the toilet, so one dose, one package, kind of like a Tide Pod type situation. Drop that down the tank, flush it with some water, and that will treat that tank until the tank is full. And then once you discharge the waste, you could treat the next uh, uh, load of, of black waste. So there's uh, 12 doses we give you to get started. And then on the floor, uh, there's a furnace duct here that when you have your forced air propane furnace on, it will heat this compartment as well as the rest of the trailer and the tanks are heated on this trailer. The tanks are dropped into an insulated chamber with a gap around the tank and the chamber that when you turn the furnace on, it circulates hot air around your tank, giving you about a seven degree boost in temperature inside the tank. This is not a four season trailer, but it definitely will extend your season. Now, I have people that take it to way farther extreme and they, they camp in much colder weather if they bail the outside with hay and make skirts. Uh, but what this is for is unexpected drops in temperature. So if you get temperatures below freezing at night, as long as that furnace is on, that's gonna protect your tanks from freezing. The flooring is a premium woven vinyl floor. It's embedded into a rubber mat. 
So even though it looks very loopy, if you tried to take tweezers and pull one of these loops up, it's, it's not going to happen. It's melted and embedded right in the rubber mat. Uh, you could pour wine on this floor. It won't soak into anything. You just beat it right up. If you get a lot of sand in the trailer, it's easy. You could sweep it out. You could even bring a vacuum with you. Uh, but it's extremely durable. If you drop a knife or a fork on it, it's going to be very hard to pierce the surface. And it's very forgiving because it has a texture. So even if you did get a little divot in it, it's not going to show like a sheet vinyl floor would. So that's one of the big upgrades you get when you go up to the Globetrotter series versus the Signature, Serenity, and Flying Cloud. Down here on the floor, there's another furnace duct. This uh, compartment opens as an access for a technician to get into your water pump. So if we're going to winterize the trailer, Colonial Airstream gives you a siphon tube as part of our starter kit. I can disconnect the feed side of the pump. That's the side that sticks inside the fresh water tank, the side with the filter on it. And I can undo that side of the pump and screw on this fitting here, this 90 degree valve. And then you take the jug of antifreeze and you stick this in. When you turn the pump on, it will siphon that antifreeze, that's non-toxic RV antifreeze, through the pump and you can winterize the trailer. So we give you this here and uh, the pump is located in this compartment of the 25FB. In the wardrobe, there's a light, an LED light that illuminates this area so you can see what you're going to grab. There's a, a wardrobe rod here with some notches in it so that your clothes don't slide back and forth. This is an access panel if you ever wanted to get to the shower diverter for uh, repair or replacement. The owner's bag I have in here that has all the owner's manuals for all the components inside the trailer, as well as one from Airstream explaining the operation and cautions of the trailer, and one from a third party. It's called Newbie's Guide to Owning an Airstream. It's a third party look at owning an Airstream and things to do. So it's good to have all the manuals all together and read them all to understand the operation of the trailer. And you could uh, read the manuals ahead of time before your orientation. What we think the most important thing is coming to the dealership and doing your hands-on training. It's about two to three hours with a technician explaining the operation of the trailer. And they're actually going to go through and do the things with you so you understand them a little bit better. And that night nice stay after your orientation, very important. We believe that the customers have a better understanding of what their ownership of the Airstream is going to be like after spending an evening in it at the dealership. If any challenges come up, we're there the following morning to give you a hand to assist you with those before you hit the road and go back home. Above here, uh, there's a ledge. And uh, these are just, uh, we got a lot of calls on what these are. These are the stands that the TVs were on. If you were to buy it in a residential application, you wanted to put it at home, this is what the TV would sit on top of. But Airstream has to remove those because they put the TVs on the wall. The shower has a magnetic strip that keeps it shut when you're camping, a travel latch that keeps it shut when you're driving. There's a light inside that's an LED light. There's a washer on the bottom. And any water that rolls off the shower door while you're showering inside is going to run in here down the drain. We recommend either toweling down the inside of the door before you open it or putting a towel down on the floor so when you do open it, any water that runs off won't drip in your hallway. This is all fiberglass construction. It's two-piece. There's a bottom pan with a three-inch overlap and the top portion. So there's really no seam to caulk and maintain in the middle, but you might want to caulk and maintain the seam at the door. There's a clothesline that pulls across and locks in. And once you get it locked in, you can spin the dial and tighten it. This is for light items. It's definitely not for hanging towels. It could be for uh, a bathing suit or whatnot. There's another fan here in the, in the shower. You just push up, push the button, and it'll exhaust the steam out. The shower sprayer comes off the wall. Once you get your desired temperature, you could pause it. And you can lather up to save water and turn it back on. You're gonna, you're gonna have your temperature already preset. The shower diverter is just like a residential application. So it's all residential hardware. Again, this isn't plastic stuff. This is uh, all metal. It's a residential high duty cycle quality. 
And then there's a ledge here, which is actually the wheel well. That's where the wheels cut into the body. Just like if you were to look into a tailgate, uh, I'm sorry, a bed of a pickup truck, the wheels, wheel wells cut in, that's what this portion is. So you'll see this cutout change 27 FB to 25 FB because the shower is in a different position based on the wheel well. The drain has a drain plug that we recommend utilizing. When you're towing, you want to make this, sure this is in to prevent the water from siphoning out of the P-trap or settling out of the P-trap. So uh, once you're done, you're ready to travel, just put that drain plug in. That will prevent tank odor from coming inside your trailer. Now when the trailer is new, it's not going to smell too bad in your gray tank. But over years of use with uh, uh, cleaning dishes in the kitchen sink and toothpaste and the bathroom sink, it's, it's eventually going to have a little bit of odor. So that's a good practice to keep that in there. The refrigerator is a six cubic foot automatic three-way refrigerator and it's from Dometic and this is a little bit different than a Flying Cloud Signature and Serenity series which ha they have a two-way seven cubic foot refrigerator. What's nice about this refrigerator is it's very deep compared to a seven cubic foot so even though it's a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter it's a lot deeper. You have adjustable shelves in here uh, the doors have uh, compartments built into them, which are, where you can remove them depending on what you want to put in them. And the, ref the freezer portion up top has a removable shelf as well, and it comes a little ice cube tray. And then all the controls are in the middle, so you have a choice of turning it on here. And it automatically did a search, and those were plugged into electricity. I can switch it manually uh, to uh, a battery or propane, or if I went outside and unplugged the trailer, it would try to switch to propane. If your propane was off, so when you're towing the trailer, which you're supposed to have your propane off, it would then go to the battery source. If you leave it on automatic, it will then decide what to put it on depending on your situation. You could change your temperature set, set, uh, setting, so one through five, so five would be on the hottest day of the year. Uh, you want to make sure your refrigerator stays at temperature and then one would be in the winter if you're using it uh, that would uh, keep your temperature fine in the refrigerator so you can adjust it accordingly and then this will will light off if, if for whatever reason it couldn't ignite on propane there's a warning that will let you know that uh, it misfired on propane and to shut it off just hold this in for two seconds above the refrigerator there's a compartment and this doesn't go back all the way because there's a ventilation behind this refrigerator that goes through the roof of the trailer to properly vent it and keep it up to code. Below the refrigerator, there's a storage compartment that goes back up to the wheel well, and there's some furnace ductwork that runs behind there. So they utilize every inch. If you see the difference between Airstream and most manufacturers, there's a bit of cost of putting a handle, a J latch, a door, hinges, and backing versus just putting a solid panel here. But Airstream finds it's very important to utilize every inch of storage. So they spend a little bit of extra money to utilize that, that, uh, that space properly. The TV in the galley is on an articulating arm on the Globetrotter series, which will differ from the Flying Cloud Signature and Serenity, which are a solid mount. They were able to increase the size of this compartment here and inset the bracket into the wall which will allow them to do the swivel by using this style refrigerator. They also put the electrical outlet cable and antenna booster which will boost the signal to the over air standard antenna that comes with it inside the compartment instead of on the, outs on the outside of the surface wall. You want to make sure before you tow that this TV is securely stored as well because you wouldn't want it to go through the window if it's swinging around. There's a cubby up above with a USB charge port so you could charge your portable devices. And then let me just swing this back out because I want to show you underneath we have your inverter system. This is uh, when I talked about the 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is where you turn it on. When you turn it on when you're not plugged into electricity it will take your stored battery juice invert it into alternating current, AC current, up to 1000 watts. And that will be for the TV, a laptop, computer, Blu-ray player, small devices. It's not meant for a hair dryer, toaster, curling iron, or a microwave. It's just for small portable electronics. 
So with this on, there's about a, a 10 second delay until it produces electricity for those outlets and you could utilize your devices. When you're done using those devices, it's very important to shut the inverter back off because with this on, it will drain the battery system down pretty rapidly even if there's no devices in use. The Polk Audio System, this is out of the marine industry so it has a rubber cover for it, uh, but they will gain you access so you could control uh, the stereo system and it's also Bluetooth enabled so you could uh, uh, sync your uh, smartphone to it and, and broadcast uh, music throughout the sound system. But they give you uh, four speakers and a subwoofer, uh, a standard as a system, so it's a, a pretty powerful and, and great quality sound in my opinion. And the cover is great because at night it, this won't light up and, and, and glow at night if you want the stereo on. Next to that we have the Sea Level 2 tank monitoring system. So this will monitor how much battery juice we have. We have 13.2 volts. Fresh water, we're at 0%. What's nice, most RVs it's a third or a quarter. So you're either one third full, two third, or full. It happens if you're between two third and full, you don't know if you have five gallons left, one gallon left. This is nice because it's a percentage, so it'll tell you all the way up to 100% on the fresh water gray waste and black, which are all empty right now because the trailer is winterized. It also houses your water pump switch. So there's one switch for the water pump. When you flip that on, the pump will turn on and uh, it will pressurize the water system in the trailer. So when you go to turn on a faucet, you'll have running water. Once the pump is on and it feels a drop in pressure, the pump will automatically kick on to pressurize the system again. You would never want to leave your water pump on if there's no water in a tank because it will run continuously and burn itself out. And if you're hooked into city water connection at a campground, there's no need to use your water pump because you have their water pressure coming in. The water pump itself actually has a, uh, a check valve built into it that when you hook up the city water connection, it won't allow water to flow backwards through the pump into your fresh water tank. Fresh water tank, which is 39 gallons, has its own fill on the outside. This trailer is equipped with the optional solar charging system. So there's very few options available for this trailer. Um, you have a convection microwave upgrade, second air conditioner, and solar. Uh, this, this has the solar and convection microwave upgrade. The solar charging system gives you two 90 watt panels on the roof. The batteries are upgraded to absorb glass mag group 24 series 12 volt batteries with no maintenance necessary. They're 80 amp hours a piece and um, they give you an upgraded display, so standard you'd just be able to check battery here. But now I could see battery and percentage, I could see battery voltage, and I could toggle down and see solar voltage, solar charge amps, solar amp hours, and then the charging status, which is showing us right now that we are getting a little bit of solar gain because we're parked out in the sun. So I highly recommend putting the solar charging system as a factory option on your Airstream travel trailer because it's recognized under Airstream's nationwide warranty versus a dealer installed solar which is only covered by that dealer's warranty which is usually 90 days. There's really no maintenance to do to the solar except for clean the panels occasionally that are on the roof. They're PV panels and it's got a glass uh, top to it so you just want to wash it with a uh, glass cleaner. <clears throat> There's a slide out pantry with adjustable shelves on this side so you can take the shelves and adjust them. There's really no room to add an additional one. I've had people buy them um, but it's based, it allows you to lift items out properly. Just make sure that's locked in top and bottom so there's a lock up top and one on the bottom and that will keep it from coming out when you're towing. There's another storage compartment here that's very deep. These are your intakes for your air conditioner. So this is where the lint will come up and uh, get caught in the filter. You want to check and wash these periodically. Uh, you'd be surprised how much lint just being in a small place that gets stuck in here and if they get clogged it will overwork your air conditioning and could cause it to fail. So uh, you definitely want to make sure that you check these periodically. You're going to take the four screws out on each side, take the filter out, wash it, let it dry, put it back in. Overhead roof lockers, just like the bedroom roof locker with the mirror in the back and the premium hardware. The cooktop has a, a fan which ventilates outside. 
There is a louver on the outside. You do have to open to allow it to vent properly. There's also an LED light to illuminate this area. The solid surface countertop has a little backsplash to it. So if you have some water here, it's not going to roll behind the cabinet. When you lift the lid up, this is a, a different cooktop that you get on the Globe Trotter series up and above the Signature Serenity and Flying Cloud series. You just select which burner you'd want on based on the position uh, in the diagram. Put it to light, and this has an electronic spark versus other models have a manual spark. There's a towel bar up front here, and this is all sealed, so if you want to wash it, you just take the grates out. You can wash it very easily. There's no uh, drippings that are going to go underneath and you don't have to lift up a pan and uh, just make sure you do not turn these on and then close the lid uh, that will cause the lid to fail and shatter and you want to make sure you don't slam this down either but uh, the advantage to this versus the, the stainless steel bifold is that you do have a flush countertop so you do have more countertop surface the optional convection microwave Works just like a regular microwave when you put it in microwave mode. You just remove these two items and you have a carousel. When you want to use the convection mode, you turn the convection on. You're going to set your temperature and time. There's an electric element up top that glows cherry red, just like an electric oven in a home. And then there's a fan in the back that circulates a hot air around your food. And you got this little rack here and a little pan. There's a, a guide that tells you what to use, when to use, and, and how to set it up. I uh, just want to take a glance at that before you start cooking in it. But it is the more preferred option if you have a choice of either or a gas oven or a convection microwave. People seem to be going with the convection microwave because it does both it, uh, a microwave and electric convection. Below that we have a storage compartment that goes right up to the wheel well. There's another storage compartment here. And then next to that we have a propane leak detector. That's a gas leak detector. So if you do have a gas leak inside the trailer, that will sense it and an audible alarm will go off. And that is hardwired to the batteries in the trailer, so there's no batteries to replace. Keep in mind it is very sensitive. Anything sprayed, aerosol by, even a dog laying next to it might set it off. Uh, but that you just want to make sure that it does go off, that you do exit the trailer, shut your propane off, and inspect to see what caused it to come on. There's a slide-out pantry next to your cooking area, so you can put some of your items in here as well in a very convenient spot. Below the sink area, there's a drawer, a very large drawer by the way. You can put a lot of items in here. You can see the hardware that they use to open it. Nice touch. This one here is a little bit more complex because it has your silverware organizer and then it has this boxed area. And this is not storage, this is actually where your sink traps come down. So instead of making this drawer really short, Airstream engineered the drawer to go around that. So when it goes in, it doesn't hit it, but you're able to get much more surface in here. And this front area, you could actually, you know, you could store stuff in it. Like see these lids here? It'll fit right in there. So if you wanted the, the bins behind the sink area away, you could do that. I have the remote controls for the Blu-ray player and both TVs stored in here. And then for 2019, Airstream did some upgrades to the Globetrotter. They made the window awning package, which was a package and is an option, they made that standard now for 2019. We also made the ZipD power awning standard and the wireless backup camera standard on all traditional travel trailers. So inside here is a monitor that you'd put in your tow vehicle, plug it into 12 volt socket you'd turn your parking lights on and the camera in the back of the trailer would then be powered up. So you could use it for reversing but also driving. You could leave that on the whole entire time when you're driving. You can see what's going on behind you. If you're going to pass someone you could see when you have cleared them and you could change lanes. So very, uh, very excellent uh, addition they did for 2019 making that standard. The solid surface you could see here they got a little beveled edge here a little soft edge and this is a very large stainless steel Moen residential sink the growy faucet this will pull out and you could spray things and this is a very heavy gauge metal I'm sorry this is a Franke faucet the uh, bathroom is a growy faucet 
This is an electrical outlet tester that Airstream gives you so they uh, so you could test your outlets or your current coming into the trailer to make sure the campground's connection is wired correctly. This will give you all different scenarios, but correct would be two yellow lights. And then it has a GFCI reset so you could t test your GFCI to make sure that that circuit's working properly by pressing that button. You just uh, don't want to bump that button as you're releasing this because it will trip it and you might not realize it. So you just want to pull here. Um, but it is recommended to use this and make sure that's plugged into an outlet somewhere every time you plug into a campground. By the entry door, we have an area they utilize for a trash pail. Which is nice, it's right by the door, so if you want to throw some items away from the outside right in, you don't have to walk inside the whole entire trailer uh, to get it. It's right here, accessible by the door. Uh, we have some light switches for your, your spotlights over the galley. We have your accent lights, ceiling lights, and then there's an LED strip on the awning. When the awning comes out, right on the body, that will illuminate the underside of the awning, but you could dim that down and make it brighter. Uh, depending on uh, your comfort level. There's also a battery disconnect by the entry door. So if you are not plugged into electricity and you're running off the battery system, you could, uh, if you're gonna put it in storage, you could just push down and that will shut the battery system, the trailer off completely. And you could turn it back on when you're ready to use the trailer. You wanna make sure that's on when you're towing the trailer down the highway. And that will allow the, uh, the seven-way trailer plug from your vehicle if you have the alternator charge lead hooked up to charge the batteries. And it will allow you to charge the trailer when you're plugged into electricity. So that's why it says use and store. So anytime you're ready to use the trailer, turn it to use. If you're gonna put it away for storage, you're not gonna use it for a while, put it down the store. The welcome mat comes with the trailer. And then the window sticker for the trailer, we display right here on the entry door of all our trailers. We'll show you the MSRP. The base MSRP is 103 900. The three burner cooktop with convection microwave upgrade is $475. The solar charging system is $2,200. The options total is $2,675. And the nationwide destination charge, which is equal for all dealers, is $1,334. That gives you a total MSRP of $107,909. Right here by the entry door, we have a grab handle. There's USB charge ports, so you can charge some devices right here and leave them on the ledge. We have your light accent light for the rear roof locker, and the controls for the ZIP-D relaxed power awning, so you could reach in and do it right from the outside, open and close. And then there's a uh, fire extinguisher right by the entry door. So these trailers are built to code. We have emergency exit window in the bedroom. We have uh, safety glass. We have fire extinguisher, smoke detector, carbon dioxide detector, and LP leak detector all on board. The spraddling hitch material that they use on all the globe trotters is extremely durable. It's used in a lot of European yachts. There's different color schemes available, and uh, there's four total. So you have two different cabinet choices. We have the dark walnut, which we're in right now or natural elm. Natural elm will be a lighter color with a gray accent in the, in, this, in the galley area. On the dark walnut, you have a choice of Dublin slate, which is a dark charcoal material, or you have the Copenhagen cream, which is a light cream color. On the natural elm cabinet, there's two choices. There's London gray, which is light gray cushion material, and there's Barcelona Blue, which is a, a blue color cushion material. Uh, they don't let you mix and match, but uh, they do have four total choices with two cabinet choices. There's a storage compartment underneath the dinette booth here that goes all the way back in, so you can put a lot of bulk items in, maybe bottled water or uh, some of your camping gear for outside. And then there's also a storage compartment underneath this bench that flips down. You can see there's an electrical outlet underneath the dinette, and this cubby here back here is where your subwoofer is. This cutout here is your furnace return, and then there's also another compartment that flips down here, and it comes with the plastic bins as well. On the roof locker over the dinette, 
You can see we have a speaker on this side. We have a speaker on that side. There's a Blu-ray player, which plays Blu-rays, DVDs, and CD audio. There's a USB input in the front of it, so you can plug devices in. There's an electrical outlet over to the side, which doubles as a inverter outlet. On this side, we just have one bulk area for storage. There's a fantastic fan in the galley, just like the bedroom, but without the shade. There's a skylight in the galley with a shade as well. Your Vista View windows have shades, and they're under a good tension. So once you get them to your position, they won't sag down when you're towing. But you can close them all the way up. You have Ocean Air roller shades which hook all the way down to the bottom. I, uh, but I see a lot of my customers hook them under the handles if they want halfway. There's a smoke detector here with a nine volt battery you want to check and replace every six months. And then what I want to do is now is I'm going to fold this dinette down and show you what the bed looks like and uh, the process and how easy it is. First, I'm just going to take these little decor pillows, move them out of my way. I'm going to lift the bottom cushions up on, on both sides. And now that I've done that, I can actually show you, look at the craftsmanship. I do some upholstery myself for fun, but you can see they got the holes in it. So when you sit on it, it allows the air to come out. A premium zipper, top quality foam on the inside. And it's got a, a, a foam top on it, a different layer. And then this uh, bagging here, this is uh, dual purpose, but one of the big purposes for it is they hooked this up to a vacuum and compress the whole cushion and slide it in. And once they release the pressure on the vacuum, uh, it allows the cushion to, to conform to the to shape and size. But very, very high quality materials and very high quality uh, stitching. And that, that's what separates Airstream too from a lot of other manufacturers. When you sit on the cushions, the feel and the comfort versus uh, inexpensive foam, uh, you'll definitely see that, especially if you're gonna be in the tra trailer a lot, traveling across country and sitting in these cushions every day, you're gonna appreciate that higher quality. This backing piece is in a permanent position so that doesn't move. This bottom lifts up right here. And then the table, you just undo the clamps, all right, and now we can push that down and let it telescopically push down. And once we get it down, I can lock it in. I can lay these cushions down flat. And then uh, just grab the middle cushions here. And they just squeeze in nice and tight. And it's 38 by 78. The lounge here, which is 62 by 38, this slides out. And then I just put these here. And there's plenty of room where someone could get through while someone's sleeping. So that's how you could sleep up to six people in this trailer. Now what we could do is uh, we'll take a look outside. There's some stuff I want to show you on the operation of how things work on the outside as well as some of the features on the exterior. I'll meet you outside. The trailer also has a very heavy duty screen door the Airstream engineers in their factory. It's all TIG welded. It's got a stainless steel hinge with six rivets on each hinge and that locks in. This fills the gap and then when you uh, open the door, the screen door, it clips right in to the main door. So when you close the door, they're together. This is an extruded aluminum door frame here, all welded on the bottom. It's actually on an angle, so if water got in, it would roll out. And there's a, a tall lip here. Airstream puts this uh, 45 degree aluminum here that allows you to sweep the floor out without being a lip. There's grip tape that prevents you from slipping out the door. The step, this aluminum step, the bottom folds up all the way around. And then it can lift and tuck away. 
and it's completely flush with the belly pan of the trailer when you're towing. To bring it out, you could kick it and lift at the same time. Just make sure it locks in on both sides. And then you can take it and flip it from the back forward and then drop down that first step. The door has uh, heavy duty hardware here for locking. You can lock it from the inside. You could deadbolt it from the inside. You got a big deadbolt key here. And then you get that signature bank bolt shut. You got a grab handle on the outside. There's a gutter rail that allows, prevents the sheathing rain from running down the door, shoots it off to the side. There's a porch light with an LED light. It's aluminum housing. There's beautiful hinges that Airstream uh, makes at the factory. And uh, each one of these doors takes about eight man hours to produce from start to end. So that's a whole shift for one person at the factory to produce one door. The trailer also has power stabilizer jacks, all four corners. So in this compartment here, there's uh, uh, switches and buttons to bring the jacks down. They're not leveling jacks. They're not designed to level the trailer. It's just to take that bounce out of your walk. And then under the trailer, the whole underbelly is wrapped in aluminum. And there's flex foil insulation be between the plywood floor that has a marine anti-wicking substance painted to the whole perimeter. That's tongue and groove plywood. They have the flex foil insulation and it's wrapped up in aluminum. But there's specific jack locations. So now if you wanted to jack the trailer up and use it, your bottle jack from your tow vehicle, there's an indication underneath the trailer that says jack and it's, uh, there's a, a aluminum plate riveted to the frame so you know exactly where to jack it up because you don't want to punch through your underbelly. The stretch form Alcoa aluminum body panels, these, uh, these panels come in the flat sheets like the sides, but then Airstream has a stretch form machine which stretches that aluminum out to shape and they cut it and buck rivet it all in place. The belt line protection here is where the two seams overlap and are sealed completely. This uh, dresses that up and gives you a little bit more of a protection. This is the rub rail protection that takes the, the body and transitions it to the underbelly. And then uh, just make sure you check these seams periodically, expansion and traction for some caulking if it needs over the years. A steel frame, it ties into the uh, beautiful polished aluminum bumper with corner bumper guards. So if you're pulling a, a power cord around, you don't uh, rip the power cord open or scuff your knee on it. <clears throat> beautiful cast aluminum taillight housings with LED lights. Rear bumper storage, this lid lifts up, it's made out of aluminum. There's a pan here with a rubber pad inside, there's holes drilled in the bottom, it allows water to drain out. So this is for items that you're going to throw on the ground, wheel chocks, blocks of wood, power cords, anything that's going to get all muddy and dirty, you can put it back here and keep it separate from your, your uh, weather sealed trunks in the front. And these just uh, flip down, there's a rubber grommet that expands to keep it locked in place. Globe trotter medallion over your license plate bracket with a light for illumination. This back window opens all the way out right up against the window awning. It's all sunbrella material. So the material is specific to the model. So there's different designs, whether you get a signature Serenity, Flying Cloud, or Globetrotter, or Classic. This is what they use currently on the Globetrotter series. There's a Velcro area that allows this to roll up and tuck away, but when you're done using the awning, you just pull down spin these around and then the awning rolls up and it's metal wrapped to keep it out of the element. You see above that we have uh, the wireless backup camera. Beautiful Airstream lettering on the back so it's not just vinyl stickers or actual uh, uh, raised letters. <clears throat> Panoramic glass here in the back. The front would have the rock guards over it. So these are uh, tinted a little bit darker. You have uh, reflectors here, so when you're parked on the side of the road and the vehicle comes down, the taillights will reflect as well as these. This is uh, one of the stabilizer jack. Uh, you can manually do it if you needed to override it, but uh, that's why this uh, three-quarter inch nuts on the outside, but I would recommend just using the power portion. This is your furnace. 
and this is the exhaust for the furnace, so you want to keep this away from combustible items. The trailer comes with a 25 foot 30 amp detachable Marine Co power cord. I'm just using a short version of it, an extension cord for, uh, for the filming today. Below that, we have uh, cable and satellite in, so you can put a portable satellite dish outside or hook into coax cable at a campground. You got extruded aluminum wheel well trim. These are 225-75 R15 load range E, uh, 80 mile an hour speed rated tires at uh, 80 PSI. You want to check your lug nut torque before every trip or every 5, 10, 25, 50 miles if you ever remove the tire and put it back on. This has never lube hubs and never adjust brakes, so there's no bearing maintenance or repacking, but you do have to do bearing inspection and brake inspections. There's a shock absorber on each wheel. There's two axles on this trailer. The axles are rubber torsion axles, and there's very little moving parts inside. It's uh, far superior to uh, like a leaf spring system. It gives you a much lower center of gravity, uh, which will prevent the trailer from swaying. These trailers are very aerodynamic on the front and side, so if you get a heavy windy day, they perform a little bit better than a box style construction. The wheel well here has a drip tube built into it, so when you're running a your rooftop air conditioner, it will, the condensation will drip out here instead of running down the side of the trailer. There's a drain in between the wheels here to drain down your 39 gallon fresh water tank right here. And there's two petcocks in front of that for winterization. So if you want to drain down your fresh water line and your, your uh, hot and cold side, you could drain that there. Technician will go through that procedure with you during the former orientation. This is the refrigerator ventilation, the lower portion, it allows fresh air in behind the refrigerator. You don't want to store things in here, you don't want to hose it out, you want to wipe it down if it gets dusty. Up top on the roof, that hump there, uh, the silver one, that's your rooftop ventilation for your refrigerator. Behind that is your rooftop AC. Next to that, to the right, is one of your 90 watt solar panels and there's another one on the opposite side of the trailer. This long window awning, which is standard on the Globetrotter for 2019, doesn't only just cover the windows, but it covers the body and keeps the temperature down inside quite a bit. The roof is aluminum and it has a white coating on it, reflects the sunlight, which also keeps the temperature down inside the trailer. When you're done with this awning, you can roll it up. There's a tool that comes with awning that allows you to reach the strap if you can't reach it but also allows you to put the lock on so sometimes you got to pull it or twist it to get it to line up that's how easy that is and then you can see each one of these windows has a gutter rail built on top of it just like the entry door the exterior has a clear coat finish with wax you want to wash it uh, periodically just like you would with your vehicle if you ever tow through road salt, you want to wash the trailer immediately. You also want to take a power washer and wash the underbelly, your brakes, your axle system, get all that road salt that would cake in out from underneath there. And on the front cap of the trailer, if you're towing through and you get a lot of insects in the front, you want to wash them off as soon as you can because the acids from the bugs could eventually eat through your clear coat. The city water connection. We give you a 25 foot freshwater drinking hose. Uh, you want to use uh, the white hose or a blue hose, not a regular garden hose. You're going to hook that into the connection, lock it on, hook it into the campground. You could do an external water filter if you would like between the campground's connection and your hose. No need for a water pressure regulator because there's one built into this trailer already. Now again, when you hook up to this connection, you're not filling your fresh water tank, you're just providing city water pressure to the faucets and the plumbing inside. Don't get this mixed up with this, and they're clearly labeled here. This is a black tank flush. So after you discharge the waste out of the system, you're gonna put the trailer away, you're gonna put it in storage. It's best practice to leave the black tank open, hook up a regular garden hose, not that hose, a regular garden hose to this connection turn on the uh, faucet and let the inside of the tank flush out for a good five minutes to get that residual waste out before you put it away and put it in storage. The portable fresh water tank 
it has a lock on the outside and then once you take this cap off you can stick the hose in loose and turn on your faucet at a low pressure allow the tank to fill and the air to escape out of the tank and then uh, the drain we saw earlier between the axles allows you to drain down that tank and I recommend if you're not going to be using it if you have water in the tank and you're not going to be using it for about a week I would drain down all the water so you don't have any uh, residual water in the system all right <clears throat> Before I get into the waste system, I want to get into uh, power. This trailer is a 30 amp, 125 volt connection. Your home has either a 15 or 20 amp electrical outlook like this. If you wanted to plug your Airstream in at home with your big 30 amp power cord, you could use this adapter to plug it in for charging and using the TV and microwave. You cannot run your air conditioner off one of these adapters because there's too much amps for a 15 or 20 amp outlet and it will cause your breaker to pop. We give you a premium power cord adapter instead of the little block ones because the amount of resistance in these adapters, they do get hot over time and they do melt. So a premium one like this will prevent it from melting if you're utilizing it for long term. For the waste, we have a light outside, an LED light that illuminates this area. You take the cap off and I recommend uh, using rubber gloves and we give you you know, a set here to get started. And then we're gonna take our waste hose, which has its own storage tube, and we're gonna snap that on, nice and secure. And then we wanna make sure we're fully connected and secure into the campground before we do anything here. So this end comes off, and you could screw this into different settings for a campground's waste discharge. I, I, I guarantee their, their threads are going to be stripped. So we give you this little donut here which you could stick in and wedge in and then you slip the hose on top of it so you have a solid connection. Once you have that all hooked up you could hook your hose into it and then you would discharge your holding tanks. And there's two tanks. You got gray and black. Your main tank is always going to be your black tank and your auxiliary wash is you're going to be your gray. So best practice is to pull the discharge for the black first, which is your toilet. Now you got solids and toilet paper inside your hose that it might be residual. You close it and then you would open your auxiliary wash, which is your gray tank and sink and shower waste, and that would flush out your hose. And then when you're all done and put it in storage, then you could use, open that back up and use your sewer flusher. It's very important to put the tethers on when you're towing so they don't creep out. You don't want waste discharge. And you don't want to pull those handles out before you have the hose hooked up because you're going to have a surprise waiting for you when you remove the cap. And then when you're all done, you're going to pack up. <clears throat> you can take the hose and you can put it in a storage tube. Now you can see how I, the gloves would be helpful. This is just RV antifreeze, but there's going to be stuff that's going to drip out. And then you just slide that all the way in and make sure the cap is fully secured because you don't want that coming open and you lose your hose on the highway. And then you can take this and put it in a big Ziploc bag and you can put it in, your, uh, in one of your trunks or in your back bumper. And this is just a different angled adapter for the front of the hose if you want it to come straight down into a campground instead of coming straight out. <clears throat> this is the tool for operating manually the stabilizer jacks just in case you had power failure and wanted to take off. And then we have your outside utility shower with hot and cold water. And you take the wand, you hang it up on the hanger, you hot, hot and cold water so you could hose off some of these items before you put them away in storage. On the twin you get the two side extra storage compartments. They're lockable. Lift up and that takes the pressure off. You can twist and open. Insulated, weather sealed. There's a mat on the floor, protects the floor. You can see the vinyl flooring that's in the trailer goes throughout the whole entire trailer. Then all the furniture is hand carried through the entry door and placed on top. And then there's also a light inside this compartment. They're pretty long, so you can put your hitch bars in here. 
You could put the roll up uh, or, uh, camping ch chairs in these compartments. And then it's very secure, so when you're uh, done, you can lock it up so no one can get your stuff. Up front here, we have your tire information, tire pressure, tire size. We also have the VIN plate, which tells you uh, the model and VIN number. It also has some tire information on it as well, so this is a very important location to uh, uh, look over the information on. We have the stainless steel wrap protectors, which protects the front of the bat the body from strikes from your vehicle, from rocks kicking up or debris in the road. This stainless steel is thicker and more resilient than the lightweight aluminum body. This is gapped from the body to allow some deflection without the body denting behind. That's why there's a piano hinge on it and three caps you can remove to swing them out and clean leaves and debris out from behind. The center rock guard, you pull on the tethers here. You can lift it and then you can lock it in place on both sides. Then you could clean your glass, you could open your window, you could take a screwdriver, turn a quarter turn. These swing out and lift off so you could clean the glass from behind. If you're going to do any maintenance on it, I recommend opening them all the way and doing any work. Just take them off completely, put them on the ground. <clears throat> Make sure this rock guard is secure before you tow away. Put both tethers on nice and tight. This Airstream has one air conditioner. It has a 30 amp generator prep port. Uh, this will allow you to take the same power cord, plug it in here, and if you have a generator in the bed of your truck, it's a shorter run, easier. If you do get the optional second air conditioner, it not only deletes the fantastic fan in the bedroom, it deletes the generator prep port. Now you can still use a generator, you just plug it into your 50 amp power cord because now the service is upgraded from 30 to 50, from there into the back of your truck. So it's, um, you do drop some items when you do get the second air conditioner. Below here we have a pro, uh, propane quick disconnect port. They give you a hose here. So uh, this is the end that goes into the trailer. It's a quick disconnect. Just slide the collar back and put this in. Lock it and then you can turn the propane on. Now this is only for low pressure, and that's strictly because it's for your safety. You don't want to be messing, if you don't know enough about it, with high pressure propane. So this would be for a low pressure grill. So you want to check before you purchase a grill or install a grill uh, for use outside that is compatible with low pressure. If it is, then you could use this. And they purposely only gave you this long of a hose because they don't want you running it all the way around to the other side of the trailer, do, cooking under your awning and preventing it. It prevents hazards if, uh, uh, if you're trying to cook underneath an awning, so that's why it's only a short length. This compartment's lockable just like the side compartment, but there's two latches on it because it goes the whole width of the front of the uh, nightstand in between the bed. I'm going to put this in here and grab the power cord. This is the power cord that comes with the trailer, a 30 amp power cord with the Marine Co. quick disconnect lock. <clears throat> There's also a light in this compartment, and it's lockable, insulated, and weather sealed. In front of that compartment is your batteries, and Colonial Airstream gives you a battery lock. That way, the batteries, which are quite expensive on absorbed glass map upgrade, uh, are prevent from theft. Well, you can see the batteries here are, are 12 volt in, in parallel, and they're clamped down. You want to check periodically, just check the terminals, make sure there's no corrosion, make sure nothing got loose inside here, but they are maintenance free in any other manner. The propane tanks, just pull on this cord, lift up. I can undo the clamp all the way up this threaded rod. I can lift the cover off to get the propane tanks out for filling. You want to make sure you put it on nice and tight, make sure the tanks aren't wobbling around. Uh, these tanks you turn one at a, on a time and you can manually switch from left to right or you can turn them both on, bleed the air out of the system and it'll automatically switch from left to right if one is empty. The sight gauge, if one side, the whatever side is pointed to, if it goes from green to red, it means that particular tank is empty. It will automatically switch to this tank, uh, but then you just have to check it to see uh, when this tank is empty uh, because it won't indicate, it'll only indicate whatever it's pointed to is empty. 
I always recommend, and it's easier, just using one tank at a time so you know when that exact tank is empty and you can manually switch it to the next tank, turn that tank on, and you can take the other one out and get it filled. There's an electric hitch jack you can extend, which will raise, and retract, which will lower the height to get it onto your tow vehicle. There's a light that illuminates this area at night. There's a manual override. You can manually override this hitch jack in case of failure. There's a bubble level on top, which you could use. I recommend just buying a small torpedo or carpenter's level and putting on the floor in the trailer to get an idea when you're level and not level. This is a seven-way trailer cord. It's your vehicle's required to have a seven-way and an electric brake controller is required. So if you don't have one as a factory option, you could install one aftermarket. It is highly recommended that your vehicle has a 12 volt charge lead from the alternator to the trailer as well. The coupler slides forward and lifts up. It's a two and five to 16th inch bowl that is required. The trailer has electric brakes, so it has electric brake away cable. If this is pulled out, it will lock the trailer brakes. Never use this as a parking brake and, and you should never leave it out for a long period of time because it will rapidly drain your battery and it could burn the magnets out. So uh, this should always be in uh, unless you're pulling it out for maintenance or hooking up the hitch bars. You just got to put it in right away. Colonial Airstream gives you a hitch coupler lock. I just have it attached to the chains right now. That will lock this coupler and prevent it from being lifted and someone stealing your trailer. The safety chains are to be crisscrossed. You can take slack out by twisting. You just want to leave enough slack that allows your trailer to turn without everything binding. The trailer frame is gloss black, so you can touch up rust spots over time. On this side, we have a ZAMP port here. So if it did not have the solar charging system, I could buy a portable panel. I could hook it in right here. If you do have the solar charging system, you could still utilize this, but it will be either or. So if you plug in a panel here, it shuts the panels off inside the trailer and it will utilize your portable system instead. The spare tire, you pull this pin here out, this one across, tire drops down. It sits in a cradle. It's the same size rim and tire, but it's a steel wheel instead of aluminum. And uh, you definitely want to check your tire pressure on that as well before your trip because you don't want to be surprised uh, taking your spare out and that's low. And uh, you can lift the electric hitch jack up higher which will gain you better access to getting the tire in and out. And then you just want to make sure this is all secure before you, you tow away. So you just got to line everything up and slide the pin in and you're good. Put this tether on. <clears throat> on this side, you can see the Zip D power awning structure. It sticks out a little bit further than the manual awning would. We have another compartment on this side. This one's deeper than that side. And it gives you access to your water heater for low point drain and bypass for winterization. This is the water heater access door. Uh, you want to check for cobwebs periodically. You got your drain plug here on the side. There's a pressure relief valve in here. Uh, don't store any things in this compartment. It's strictly to gain access for service. There's an outside GFCI protected regular electrical outlet here. The cooktop ventilation. Just push down on the latch, allows it to open. It's best practice to close them up when you're not using it so that it doesn't flap around and you don't get dust inside the trailer if you're towing down a dusty road. And then this is the latch that kept the door open on a windy day. We don't want that flying around. And now I could get to my awning controls. I could turn the awning on. And you got to use your discretion on a very windy day like today. You might not want to leave the awning out long. There's no wind sensor. You're the one that would press the button to bring it in and out. <clears throat> you can see the awning rolls out. There's a motor up top here. There's also motors inside the arm that raise it. And once you get it out, you can adjust the angle. So it's best practice once it's out. If you're going to get some light rain, you would tilt the front part down so any of the water would run off there instead of being right in front of your door. 
This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. I'd love to hear from you on Facebook. I'm Colonial Patrick. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. I'll see you soon.